Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Thomas Barashian. Leshi Vashniowski. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain our brothers to the responsibility of diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Leshik and Thomas, we heard in the second reading today, uh, which was proclaimed in Polish, uh, that St. Paul said to us, therefore, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. It is the mercy of God that has brought you to this cathedral, this sanctuary, this altar, this diocese, to seek the uh, order of deacons to seek to enter the church and service. Uh, and you come really as you are. All the years of preparation that you put into this moment and that have been put into you <laughs> to prepare you for this moment, uh, the time of prayer, especially the time of discernment, uh, the time of, of really coming to know yourself uh, is what part of what St. Paul uh, describes. And he says to us, that which is not of God, we are to renounce, we are to let go of. And we are to be very much aware of, but we are to hear the call to the word of God is what he's telling us. And that it's the word of God that really needs to be at the center of our lives. And of course, as you have studied and know, the word of God is Jesus in our love relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and each time that you proclaim the word, especially now as, as we pray, deacons, once this ordination takes place, and you proclaim the gospel, I just encourage you to be open to the miracle of the word happening, that when you proclaim the word of God, just as they did in the early church, miracles happened. Miracles happened. Lives were changed. People were deeply touched. Uh, and it is the word of God, it is Jesus Christ that they are experiencing and they are healed by. St. Paul also goes on to say that we are to be open to the declaration of, of the truth and we are com to commend ourselves to that truth and the truth is that Jesus Christ is among us that Jesus Christ lived among us that he has taught us that he has suffered his passion his death and his resurrection it is the kerygma that we share it is the the proclamation of the word of God, the good news, that Jesus is risen. Then in the midst of life, and of course in this moment of the coronavirus, and we have uh, basically 10 of us here for your ordination, along with everyone else that's watching, uh, it's a moment in which we say before the whole world that there is hope in Jesus Christ, and that the love of Jesus Christ calls us to be at the center of, of our lives. And that's really what you're proclaiming 
in your desire to be deacons of the church, that you have placed your sights on God and that God is at the center of your lives. And therefore, your prayer, your study of the word, your experience of the sacraments, your experience of the people of the church will be all a sign of how God is reaching into your lives. And so as St. Paul says to us, for we do not preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus Christ our Lord. And so with the ordination to the diaconate and now the ability to preach, you preach your life of Jesus Christ. Every time you share the word of God in preaching, you are sharing your prayer life. You are sharing your love life with Jesus Christ. You're sharing who you are with him and who he is for you especially. And that's what the people will experience. They'll experience Jesus through you in the word of God. Uh, and we are very much servants. And St. Paul uses even a stronger word. He says, slaves of the word slaves of Jesus Christ. We are his servants. And so even though we may have a pulpit we're preaching from, it is by the mercy of God that we're brought to that pulpit, and it is by God's love that we are there in true humility, that it is about Jesus Christ and not about us, not about us. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring us to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. Wow. St. Paul had had an experience of Jesus that was so powerful that when he looked upon Jesus, he saw the glory of God. That's really who we're called to be. As we share the word, minister to people, and so as you, you tithe young people or adults, as you witness marriages, as you help people in moments of time of death and uh, in funeral services, uh, as you share the word of God, it is a moment to share that experience of Jesus Christ that you've had and to let the light of the face of Jesus Christ shine through you to them in each of the different uh, moments of ministry that you will have. And hopefully we pray many, many years of ministry that you will have, both of you. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, St. Paul tells us, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We hold this gift of the diaconate and eventually, hopefully, the priesthood in these earthly vessels. It is the grace and power of faith, hope, and love in Jesus Christ. But it is also a commitment that we make very personally and it's the commitment to live our lives in love with Jesus Christ forever. And that's really a good description of celibacy for us, that we love Jesus Christ so much that he and his church become our spouse. He and his church become our one love. He and his church become really our family in a very personal way. I've been praying for you that the gift of the Holy Spirit may come upon you during this ordination and that as you receive uh, his love and the receive the laying on of hands, that that spirit may come upon you and lift you up and that you may be from now on a sign of the love of Jesus Christ as deacons of the church. May God bless you and love you and I look forward to working with you, each of you.
Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Those of you who are prepared to celebrate the, the, the celibate state and to embrace it, do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ, the Lord, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, in service of God and man. I do. do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper in your way of life, in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God, and indeed for the whole world. I do. do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do with the help of God. Do you rep promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these, his servants, whom he in his kindness raises to holy order of the diaconate. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, Saint Michael. Pray for us, holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. 
Saint Perpetual and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers. Graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present. For in our judgment, we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who will portion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. 
In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation. And through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, you grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister to in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of the church, your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your sons, apostles, appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry that they may devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these, your servants of yours, who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and set steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. 